Buenos Dias Gunners Collective back at it, you already know, like a motherfucking smack addict, right? And as you can tell by that thumbnail right there, the my you know what I mean? Trip out, man. In a menudo style of direct fashion, I'm going to tell you about this individual, right? This is a lightweight profile on one Cisco the Merced NFL gang, right? And for those of you from Merced and from the Central Valley that know this individual, then you know he's a cutthroat bandito. And at the end of the day, man, here's his story. And I'm going to tell you from my view, from my vision, hey, from the tiempo I did because of him. Trip out on this, right? So this Duke Cisco, man, very well-known individual out of the city of Merced. I don't know if any of these youngsters nowadays know who he is. I'm sure they've heard of him. But I know who he was, I know who he is, and I know what he's ever going to be, right? And trip out, so around 2005, 2006, this man had been maintaining in the California Department of Corrections. He had been in prison, and of course, he was pulled as, a, as an hermano. He was a B, he was a bro at one point in time, okay? So he was doing his thing in a northern fashion. He was a very educated individual, well indoctrinated, knew what time it was, and was pretty known on the streets of Merced. Now, our paths had never really crossed. I was real good friends with a couple of his primos, one playboy from Merced, as well as the homo Jokiar. These were my homeboys. Um, I knew these vatos. They were from my water. We were all from dead end. Um, I grew up with them in the Beachwood area, man. I grew up real close with Joker. He was one of my taitas. We kicked it every day. And I knew of his primo. His primo not being from the same neighborhood as me or the same barrio, but also being a very vicious character in the city of Merced. You know, I had just never had the privilege or the chance of meeting with this individual. You gotta understand that I went to YA at a young age. I caught a hot one, I was gone. I was on down that yellow brick road while he was out there running wild like Hulk Hogan, right? He was out there ripping t-shirts off and doing what he was doing. And at the same time, I was maintaining and doing what I had to do to survive. Um, so our past never crossed. But as the story goes, man, things are, are built on fate. Things are meant to happen. So I get out, man, late 96. I'm chilling, and I'm still hearing this guy's name. But like I said, we never just, it, it just never happened, man. We never met up with each other. I ended up going to prison, getting in and out. At the same time, he was doing tiempo. And I was hearing his name. His name was ringing bells. He was pushing quickly up the ladder, man. Um, he was in the right places at the right time, meeting the right people. And he got pulled. Now, um, of course, when someone gets pulled, man, he's to be adhered to, he's to be admonished, he's to be looked at as the big homie, and that's what he was. So we had a couple big homies out of the city of Merced at that time, and uh, I'm not going to say all their names, but I'm just saying that they were doing what they had to do uh, to make it happen for the cause and for the struggle. Um, and he was one of those. So he ends up doing time in Pelican Bay. And at the time we're hearing about him being in Pelican Bay, he's striving. See, but what we didn't know, and what a lot of people knew, was that he actually fell off. Something happened while he was in Pelican Bay that didn't work out to the benefit of him and he fell off, right? He fell off. He went to the other side. He became non-active or what you guys consider out there a degenerate. He was no longer in good standings within the organization, within the group. And that's cool. That's fine and dandy. That was his thing. Like I said, I don't know what led up to that. But at the same time, I was pushing actively. I was doing my thing with the homies and we didn't hear about it. So about 98, 99, this guy gets out. And when he gets out, he has already formulated a plot and plan, and that's to manipulate and deceive the masses. He's deceiving people out there. He's still kicking it with a lot of his older homeboys, a lot of his people that he's been around for a long time that still show you know, faithfulness and loyalty to him, irregardless of his standings. Now, a lot of people at that time weren't pushing that DO active line. You know, We're talking about 98 here, 97, 98, 99. People didn't really know about that. You know, it wasn't as big as it is nowadays where that's what the first, that's the first question everyone asks is you are, are you active? Are you with the business? Back then, no one asked that. So no one knew what had happened with them in prison. Word hadn't traveled to the city of Merced yet. Not like it does nowadays. Um, so we weren't knowing, you know, when I was in and out of prison and again, I was hearing his name. I was hearing he was out there kicking up dust. He was a very dangerous and vicious individual, this guy Cisco that's on the thumbnail. You know, he was no one to be slept on. Everyone knew he was about his business. He was going to handle it. And we thought for the most part that he was a Norteño and he was doing it in that fashion. Little do we know, in a menudo style, he wasn't. He was twisting the mentalities and twisting the mentors up of younger homeboys to basically join his little crew or his little group and to get busy on actives, right? But we didn't know this. So let's fast forward to 2005, 2006. Now the world is knowing. Now the city of Merced is up to par. We're functioning like a well-oiled machine. And the whole thing was 
to look for dropouts, to look for people that weren't functioning. Yes, it's not a good look. It's not a good thing. But at that time, that's what I was into. That's what we were all into. That's how the story goes. Okay, so that what happened was this guy gets out of, uh, out of the bay again. Little did we know he was in the bay, not functioning, and he actually became a northern rider, right? He joined the DO gang. He joined the dropout gang. He became a northern rider. I know some of you out there like to say the northern riders are still active, pushing a hard line. But from my experience and from what I know, they weren't functioning, right? They no longer were functioning or they never had functioned on an active yard. They were on S&Y yards or non-general population yards. Anyways, he decided to join up with this group, unbeknownst to us out in the city of Merced. So he gets out. He gets out and the first thing he does is he checks in with some of the hermanos and hits a couple houses, man, where the homeboys are posted up and decides to lay a few people down. He decides that for no other reason, he's going to do some fucking dirtbag, bandito move, cutthroat move and lay some of the homeboys down and take what they have in these safe houses. And he does that. So now it's all point bulletins on him. Now we know. OK, and me being pulled at that time, me being a homeboy, I already knew what time it was. And my whole thing was to Operation Spill This Drink Named Cisco. Right. We were trying to get this cat. Um, and it seemed like the wiggleization was real with him. Every time we'd bend the corner and see his car, every time we'd see him, I'd catch him at a party slipping or whatever. He'd hit the cuts, hit the fences. And the, it wasn't like this bottle was no punk or was no sucker, man. He always kept something real big on him, something real vicious. Um, so you knew that if you ran up on him, man, be prepared for whatever was coming. You know, this man was always strapped up. He was always about his business, as I was at that time. Um, so there was plenty of circumstances, um, plenty of chance meetings where I actually uh, ran up on him and he actually wiggled on me. Um, and here's one of them. So one time I go to uh, the Palladium. It's in Modesto. It's a club. And me and the homeboys are kicking it. And before we can even get into the Palladium, we get into it with some fucking cats in the parking lot. It goes down in the parking lot, man. We're throwing fists. We're throwing punches. Things happen. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. We're young. We're dumb. Um, but we get off, right? And uh, it's like a melee in the parking lot. And everyone starts going their own ways. Of course, we're coordinating our whereabouts with cell phones. And I get at some of the homeboys like, hey, trip out, bro. Fucking what should we do? Let's go back to the city. Let's go back to the town, Merced. And we'll all wiggle. We'll go throw a party at the homegirl's house. It is what it is, man. I guess it ain't going to be Palladium tonight. It was cold that night. The wind wasn't blowing that way. So, of course... We jump in the whips. We all get there down that 99, down that freeway through the central wire. And I get lost. I get, uh, 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 the coordination wasn't real that day. For some reason, I can't get all hold of all the homeboys and to find out where they're at. And I end up seeing a house party cracking. And the chick that I'm with, she was like, hey, let's go over here. It's an M Street party. M Street being another body of Merced. And I'm not trying to speak on the bodies or disrespect them. I'm just saying they were doing their thing, throwing their little party. And I've known a lot of the M Streeters since day one. You know, since fucking the body was formed, I've been friends with a lot of them. Shout out to the homeboy Bart from M Street. Anyway, so fucking I get there to that party. And as soon as I get there, all eyes on me. Everyone's looking at me funny being from dead end. And I don't know the reasoning behind it. I'm thinking, are these about to tripping off us? What the fuck? What happened? You know what I mean? And uh, what it was, was that full Cisco was there. He was posted up in the backyard. So when I see him, first thing I do is call the homeboys. Hey, I got this full on my sights. I'm about to get off where I'm at at. It's on a crack and right. So I was trying to wiggle to where he was at. Of course, he's seen it. Next thing you know, I turned my head one time to give me a little thing of punch. This motherfucker punched out. Boom. He was gone over the fence. He was, he wiggled, right? Homeboys show up just in the nick of time for me to tell him, hey, the vault got on somewhere. So again, that was one time he eluded me. There was another chance when there was a chick, right? There was a chick that he was actually, uh, it was one of his side bitches, right? And I actually happened to know her. And so the setup game was real, man. I got at her. I was like, hey, you know where this cat's going to be at? What's he doing? Because he was a hall motherfucker to find. You show a hall motherfucker to find. Where are you in those little faux G's? You know what I mean? All right, at least you gave me a painting. The vato was hard to find. So what happened was she, the setup game was real. She was supposed to bring him to the spot. Okay. Um, of course, I get a text message. And at that time, I'm not going to lie, I've always wore jewelry. I've always had jewelry. I've always been known as that flashy motherfucker. These were just nicknames and, and words and the way the homeboys used to clown on me. And uh, I get a text message saying, nice try, you flashy motherfucker, right? The Cisco. Of course, he eluded me again. Now the game is getting personal. Now the game is getting real. So, of course, this is where I get locked up and incarcerated. Um, it's all point bulletin on this guy because not only was this guy hated in the city of Merced, he was actually putting in his work. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything he was doing because I'm not trying to put more time on this individual, but I will say that he was dangerous. 
Okay, he wasn't one, no one to run up on or sleep on. This motherfucker was using offense instead of defense. He wasn't doing the offense defense. He was offensively handling his business first. And the word was that if he seen anybody from dead end, he was going to peel their shit backwards, right? So we were always on point when it came to this guy, but we were always looking too. You know what I mean? So I was scared. Hey, we knew how to squeeze too. And in that fashion. Um, so one day we find out where he's at. You know, we find out where he's at. And I'm not going to say who was with me. Um, I'm just going to speak on myself. And let's just say things got a little dangerous that day. And uh, there was a little back and forth with a little back and forth. And uh, he was able to elude me and able to escape me once again. The Vato had nine lives like a cat. You know what I mean? But Sasuke, he was about on his eighth or ninth at this point in time. Uh, so we were bearing down on him. It was getting closer and closer to Operation Drink getting spilled. You know, it was going to be all bad for this situation. Um, and I ended up walking into a club. And let me tell you the story, man. I've told the story before, but let me tell you the story. Um, we were not supposed to be going to clubs because we didn't know how to act at clubs at that point in time. This was 2006, about, I'd say, December, January. We were fucking up. Basically, the homeboys were fucking up. We were going in the clubs, uh, doing a little too much, and we were being told, man, not to go into no clubs because you guys don't know how to act in the city of Merced. So, of course, we peeled back, man, um, listening like we were supposed to and not hitting these clubs. Well, of course, man, we get the word on the curve that we're allowed to go into clubs, go and have a good time, man. Just don't act a fool. Don't shine no bad light on the homeboys. So, bam, first night, it's on a cracking. And me and a couple of homeboys, man, I'm not going to speak their names, but we actually walk into a club and we spot this individual. Okay, we spot him. I get at the homeboys. I tell them, look, ain't going to be no dancing, ain't going to be no drinking, ain't going to be no hip hop. Hooray, ho. No, hey, the hoes over there. We're about to get off. So, of course, I walk up to him, me and another homeboy. And I fucking hit him up. Now, I know who he is, but I want to properly identify this cat so that all my T's are crossed and my I's are dotted, right? So that I look out for myself because I know people are going to question what happened that night. So I hit him up and he kind of looks at me and he's surrounded by a lot of individuals and he kind of smirks. And when he smirks, he says, I'm from NFL gang Northenio. And I said, oh, you were Northenio again all of a sudden, right? And of course, he looks at me some type of way. I turn towards the bar, grab a, a beer and hit him in the head with the glass and it's on and cracking. Quietly as it's kept, people are going this way, that way. My homeboy pills back. He handles his business. Another one takes off running. Um, everyone's, it's a melee. Everyone's getting off in this club. And I get stabbed in the back of my head. I'm not going to say who did it, but let's just say it happened. Um, and of course, I run one way. All the degenerates or the non-actives are chasing me. The homeboy wiggles, jumps in the whip, and jams with the chicks. And now I'm going through it. And I'm, I'm trying to get away because Vatos are after me. And uh, it's going down. I'm downtown in Merced. If anyone knows where Maloney's is, it's right off Main Street. I'm trying to wiggle. I get to 16th Street in the town. I'm right there by the Kentucky Fried Chicken. I jump on the cell phone and tell my bitch, pick me up now. Right? She hits the corner, comes and swoops me up. Homeboys are asking what happened. We get back to the safe house, get back to the homegirls pad. And now we're doing IRs. We're doing reports. We're reporting back to the homeboys, back to the regiment, what exactly took place. Because, you know, I came up leaking. Um, and it's all good. You know, we got ours. They got theirs. That's part of the game. You know, that's gang banging 101. Shit happens. Um, so again, now I'm furious, Vato. Now I'm really mad. And this Vato is the most hated cat in California at that time. If not California, Merced, California. We want this motherfucker with a passion, right? So like an assassin, of course, I'm throwing on masks and I'm trying to make shit happen. Um, and it just is not working out. He's able to elude me. Okay, now what happens with this guy is eventually... It goes in the newspaper. I see it on the front page of the newspaper. I'm wanted for this bar fight. I'm wanted for this assault. And I'm like, how the fuck did they find out? Well, I'm going to tell you how they found out. This man actually walked into the South Precinct of Merced um, Police Department and was like, this Vato Gunner from Merced is affiliated with whoop de wop whoop de whoop and I'm a dropout and they're trying to kill me is what he says, right? Um, of course, they're on me. Uh, the black has put my face, all point bulletin, me and another homeboy. And uh, they're trying to catch me. That's when I went up to Juarez. I wiggled. I was up in Mexico chilling. Like, para, pa, 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 vivo los tres animales. I was over there doing a cumbia, chilling, trying to stay out the way, way. Um, of course, I was on the run. And I was going through what I was going to, uh, going through eating tacos de perro in Juarez. Okay, I'm, so I'm chilling over there. Meanwhile, shit's going crazy in the city of Merced. Everyone's still trying to get this cat, especially now because word on the curb is, he went and told on me. And that's a fucking fact. You know what I mean? The paperwork is right there. I got my discovery when I finally got caught up and incarcerated. And it blew my mente. Because I knew this Vato was a D.O. And I knew this Vato had fell off and did whatever he did. But I didn't think that he would play cutthroat games like that to walk into the police station to give him my name. 
But of course, he did because he felt the pressure. The pressure was being applied. Like the Sasuke was like motherfucking Aaron Donald on Burrow. I was coming, but I was trying to sack his ass, right? And uh, almost had him a couple times. Devonta just knew how to rock and run. You know what I mean? He was getting first downs when he shouldn't have been on fourth down. Damn refs. It is what it is. Anyways, I end up getting locked up and incarcerated. The undercovers come to my house, kick my shit in. AR-15s to the Dizome. I'm like, oh, wait, can I smoke a frajo before I go? I already know it's all bad. It's a rapalapagus. I'm done. Menudo. I'm about to be menudo. I'm going to jail. Of course, I hit the block actively with the homeboys at this time. It's 2006. I quickly take my position within the COC and do what I'm doing. Um, and I get my discovery. And in my discovery, that's when I find out that he went and fucking told the placas that I was applying too much pressure and that I was working for this group or, or associated with this or that and that and this, right? That I'm not going to speak on. And uh, whatever the case may be, I end up taking a deal for four years and going to prison. Okay, and this guy continues his rampage. He continues to do degenerate acts. He continues to do what he is doing in the city of Merced. And I'm hearing about it. Homeboys are writing me. I'm on the phone. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm wiggling. And I'm listening to the conversations and I'm hearing what's going on. And this fucking Vato just was hated. People hated him because he was putting in work. You know, and I'm not going to sit here besides saying that, yes, the motherfucker put me in prison. I understand that that's part of the game. He chose to do that. That's choices he's going to have to live with and deal with for the rest of his life. But I will say that he was a very dangerous individual in the aspect that if you ran up on him, he was quick to buck. Okay, so what happens is about a year or two later, I'm already down the road. But I'm already locked up, incarcerated. Locked up, they won't let me out. And I'm not even really worried about what he's going through because the situation was already on dirty and now the situation is real. I'm going through my own motions. Now, at the same time, he's still out there doing what he does in the city of Merced. And he actually gets caught up for a double shooting, an attempted murder, and they... For what she fights, and of course, because he fucking was doing a little too much of this, they end up giving him only 12 years. Funny thing is, I got familia that are doing 27, 28, 30 years for things that people didn't even really get shot. But it'd be like that sometimes. Um, so this is what happened, and it's not personal. Okay, let me express that to you guys right now. There's nothing personal with me and this guy. What he chose to do, he did. That was over 20 years ago. Hey, you know what I mean? If I catch you on the rebound, then it is what it is, Brent Wood. But at the same time, man, I'm not trying to oog him and boog him and go over there and look for the cat or whatever. You know, he I don't even know to, to be to be totally honest with you if the man is out or he's just getting out. Um, but I do know that at that point in time, it was all about him. All eyes on him. He was the one in Merced that was most hated. And I'm going to tell you why. You know, um, there's individuals like myself. I'm a hated individual in life. Right. And that's cool. You know, I'll go ahead and grasp that and run with it. That's fine, man. I'm not mad at it. You know, it is what it is. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. I know this. But at the same time, man, it's not because of anything weird or crazy that I've done. It's just because I'm merely being myself. Now, this guy, what he chose to do was overstep his boundaries within the collective with the homeboys. You know, he tried to manipulate the masses. He manipulated the homeboys. He was able to wiggle in, steal things, take things, and then go on the offensive. And what made us so mad and what made all the homeboys so mad is we couldn't catch this motherfucker. He was smooth. I thought he was a smooth criminal. And he was also one of the guys that if you were by yourself, of course, you would run up on. But he wasn't running nowhere. He was about to handle his business. Of course, with me... He already knew how I was playing offense too. So I was scared. I was like the Patriots in their heyday. I was coming through. And that's just the way it was. I'm not putting too much on it. Not putting no fucking tapatio on it. This is just the real. This is how it was in the town at that time. Now, of course, things have gotten worse in the town. It's progressed now. There's a lot of things going on. It's none of my business. Whatever they're doing in the city, whatever they're doing in the town, man, I hope it works out for everyone. But I'm saying in 2005, 2006, the wiggle was real. One Mr. Cisco man, was the most hated bandito in the city of Merced. And it was because of things that he was doing. Not that any, not anything anyone did to him. He chose that. Of course, he chose to join, join up with the Northern Riders, a degenerate group. And when he choice, chose to I can't even say that fuck when I start talking about them. I want to throw up. He fucking chose to join up with that group and push and rock that narrative and rock that. But really, I don't think he was really down with that cause. I think he just used that as a fucking backbone to gather troops up. And let me tell you, at that time, there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them. And it blew my mind and it hurt my heart and my mentality when I seen a lot of the active homeboys that I still function with that were fucking with me, that were real, were, were backdooring me and still kicking it with this guy and giving him information and letting him know. 
I don't know if it was out of fear. I don't know if it was out of loyalty. I don't know if they were undercover brothers. But at the same time, man, they were still fucking with this cat. And that's why we weren't able to get our claws into him. Besides, we was trying to whip his ass up. What are they? But we didn't. You know, with that being said, it's never a good look. I reflect back onto these war stories and I reflect back onto individuals like that. And all I can say is, man, I'm praying for you, bro. I hope that you fucking get out and change your whole life and things change. At the end of the day, we're all brown, whether you told on me or not. Things happen. And in that fashion, man, I'm not tripping. I was quick to slip the clip in and get into spitting. And so were you, man. And we had our heyday. And we had our time. Our time was there to shine. Well, you know what time it was, right? And that's about it. But with that being said, man, I just wanted to say I know everybody has a story of a vato that was most hated in their city that they just fucking couldn't get. And this was one of them, Cisco from NFL. Do I give him respect? Fuck no. Do I uh, admonish his name? Charlie. Am I going to sit here and shit on his name? No. I'm just telling, stating the facts and being real and stating simply what it is, man. With that being said, man, remember, Arasa, it's all about the brown skin and pulling your brother up and showing love, man. I hope that you go out there and move fast with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. This was just a war story with the gun. I was reflecting on it today. I actually seen a picture of him. I was like, this fucking puto right here. Bang, bang. Oh, do I remember. And there's a lot more stories that go into it that I just can't speak on, man, because I'm not trying to shine a bad light on anyone that was involved. Because for what the homies were doing, the homies were doing, and that's none of our business, and especially not no one else's business. Bang, bang. And in that fashion, the gun. If you like these war stories, if you like this channel, man, please like and subscribe. If you don't hit the thumbs down, heavy as the head that wears the crown, you know what it is. The gun, bang, bang. I appreciate everybody. And it's all real.